City to Talk with Rock. I found him open, I found him curious, I found him interested in a lot of aspects of life, and that day, very, very willing to share. It seemed like he was in kind of a rare mood. We'd like to bring you this two-part interview now. We started back at the beginning, and I talked about or asked him about the Depression days. His father had walked out on his family, so I asked him if that had an enormous impact on his life. Oh, yeah, a great deal. Um, yeah, I saw a lot about that. Uh, for years, I uh, resented him as a little kid, but I think that was mainly my mother's influence. She resented him. When did you find him again? When I was uh, 17. What was that like? Awful. Why? What happened? Well, you see somebody that you thought about all your life. Well, first of all, uh, when he left, I was five, four. I never for a moment thought, child's mentality now, never thought for a moment that he left my mother. I thought he left me. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that. And uh, so I had this um, curiosity to see him again, or great love for him, whatever. And I remember he was work working nights, and I'd come in <clears throat> on the Greyhound bus, and I was sitting with his wife, and I heard him upstairs get up. And I thought, oh, Christ, what do we do now? What do I say? And I'm sure he was thinking the same thing. But it never occurred to me that he would be worried about it. He came down the stairs, and uh, he said, uh, hi there. I don't know really what I was looking for. I guess I was looking for some sort of an emotional confrontation or something. But it wasn't very calm and cold. And then your mother married a man named Fitzgerald, and you actually took his name. Yeah, adoption. So you were adopted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then another name. Roy, well, Roy Shearer was actually Roy Shearer. I was born Roy Shearer, and I was Roy Fitzgerald. And then, then I was changed to Hudson. By a man named Harry Wilson. Henry. Mm -hmm. Henry Wilson. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? He said, it's time to change your name. And I said, uh, at the wise old age of 22, why? What's wrong with Roy Fitzgerald? And I say it now. But in those days, it was the thing of, you must change your name because we can't have you say it. For no reason at all, people just did it. What made you succeed when others failed? Have you ever thought about that? Mm hmm I don't have an answer. I truly don't have an answer. Um, I remember starting with lots of, <clears throat> lots of guys, lots of guys who would go into acting class or school or uh, tutoring or what have you. Oh yeah, I got a job at Fox. You know, I got a job at Warner Brothers. Yeah. And little by little, these guys would fall away or disappear most, sometimes or get out of the business or get do something else. I don't know why. Is it something inside? that you projected? Well, I can't be objective about myself, so I can't answer that question. Um, there is that undefinable thing that makes people look. I don't know if I have it or not, but uh, some people have that attraction, other people do not. Elizabeth Taylor. There are those who say that. Do you one agree? Of one of them. Mm -hmm. What about your relationship today with Liz Taylor? Are you friends? Yeah, and you're I've always... Been really? Yeah. Why? Why was it just an early friendship that grew? Well, I call Elizabeth the Earth Mother. Really? Because she is. Uh, I think she's one of the best people I've ever known. I don't particularly like all of the uh, bad publicity that comes out on her. I don't like her attacks that she gets all the time because she not, does not deserve it. She's a good woman and believes in being good. 
And she minds her own business. And then another lady she had an association with, Star Day. You only did three pictures, and yet it seemed that there was a formula there. Why only three? Since the last one, we've been looking for another one. And 20 years later, we can't find one. Wouldn't you think there would be some story somewhere? Can't do it. Mm -hmm. Every one of them is, I mean, a lot of people have written in scripts and ideas and things and say, oh, it's another pillow talk. Well, we already did pillow talk. So why do it again? I and mean, then another lady who was important in your life, Susan St. James. Do you still keep in touch? Yeah, I haven't seen Susan. Uh, Susan uh, was married with her family. Uh, then she divorced and married again, moved back east here. And I, of course, was busy and so forth and so on. And so, you know, you'd, we haven't seen each other. But, I mean, she has sent photographs of the children growing up and so forth and so on. I'm sure we are. I just, we just haven't seen each other. Macmillan and wife, was that a departure for Rock Hudson? Was mm -hmm. it planned, or did it just happen? Well, it just happened. You see, the first one, which was ultimately you could call the you would call the pilot, was not. It was a movie of the week, and it was to be a one shot. And then, after that, the network decided let's make a series out of it. And then, negotiations, and then we decided to do it, and we did it for six years. Did that change your life in any way? It took about 25 years out of my life, but <laughs> that's hard work. That's relentless hard work, lots of hours. During the Devlin Connection television show, something happened to you. That's when you realized that something was going awry with your body. Well, it was during that time when I felt the thing happen. You were referring to the heart surgery? Yes. Yeah. Um, no, that was kind of, in a sense, all of a sudden. Uh, I, had, I hesitate to say this, but uh, because it makes me a fool. But I had had the warnings for a couple of years. What were they? Chest pains, and I thought it was indigestion. And very foolishly, I did nothing about it. Um, and then, when it happened in the middle of the night, with this dead arm, mm. I thought, oh no. Not me. I mean, those things happen to other people. Never to you, right? Right. So I thought, right. I sat up all night, the rest of the night, because I was afraid to lie down. And then along around 7 o'clock, I called the doctor. He said, go on down to emergency. And uh, I did. They could find nothing wrong. Why didn't you get up right away when you thought, oh, I no? I did. I sat up in a chair. But weren't you, weren't you tempting? fate by just sitting there, not doing anything? Well, I mean, uh, I waited two years. I mean, why, why not four more hours? <laughs> why do you think you waited? Was there fear? <coughs> well, it was in the middle of the night. I didn't know really where to go, to be honest. It never occurred to me to go to an emergency hospital. You know. But I did, uh, finally. And they could find nothing wrong. And then <coughs> he said, uh, I think you better have an angiogram. Oh, I said, what for? So I had an angiogram four days later. And he came in and he said, we strongly suggest surgery. Because if you don't, we give you about a month. And I said, well, why don't you do it yesterday? Why don't you do it now? Well, I have to wait till Monday, OK? And I went ahead and did it. What kind of things went through this head of yours, this successful, well-respected man, who now finds out that without surgery, that is also dangerous, you might have a month left. What, what things do you think about when you face that? I didn't think too much about that, <clears throat> because that's not me to give in to any of that nonsense. Uh, but I did think about surgery tomorrow morning. OK, it's the night before. Right. Well, if I make it, terrific. If I don't, terrific. I'll never know the difference. Isn't it interesting you said it's not me to think about all those things? Are you the big macho type that no, nothing's going to get? No, not at all. Not at all. I, am, I have, like everybody else, weaknesses and, and strengths. But one of the strengths, I suppose, perhaps stupidly so, 
is that I will not be sick. I will not be dependent upon anybody else. And I simply won't have it. Well, that might be a dumb statement, but it got me out of the hospital faster. Mm -hmm. And it got the pain out of me faster. And I recovered faster. What's the best part of Rock Hudson and his life? Now, today, or possibly tomorrow, but not yesterday. I don't, I don't know, I don't waste time. I think it's a waste of time to think about all that, or you know, worry about your mistakes, or pat yourself on the back for the things you, you thought were, to, were right. I don't, it's a waste of time for me. You seem pretty regular to me. I think I am. It's sure it's nice so. to meet you, Rock oh, Hudson. You. Really, Thank nice you. to meet you. Nice Thank you. you very Thank you. much. Good day. Today, the...